Hello and welcome back, Sleepy Wesset here, and I have another Miniatures Monday video for you. Today we're going to be doing our third part of painting the Champions of Death Blood Bowl team from Games Workshop. The first two videos in these series should appear in the playlist with this video, but I will link them down below. In the first video we covered basic prep, so magnetizing, filling in gaps, and priming. In last week's video, we covered painting all the linemen characters, so that's all the zombies and skeletons. In this video, we'll be covering painting all the positional players, so that's the ghouls, the mummies, and the whites. Like last week's video, there's a lot of repetition of paint schemes because we're doing a team. So instead of making you sit through the entirety of me painting a ghoul and, paint, and then painting a mummy and then painting a white, I front-loaded the videos with the specifics to each uh, positional type. So we'll do a section on the ghoul flesh, a section on the mummy's skin and wrappings, and then a section on the white's uh, glowing bones. And then the remainder of the video will be covering the more generic shared elements, so things like the metal, the cloth, and the leather work and basing on the models. There will be some duplication with my previous video because of the shared uh, team colors and basing elements, but I'll put links uh, to the specific timestamps down below so you can jump to the sections you're most interested in. Hope you'll find this interesting, and let's get into it. For the first section of painting here, we'll be covering how I did the cool flush. With the ghoul flesh, I was attempting to achieve a kind of gray purple color to give a sense of almost dead but not exactly dead, and a bit of a cooler tone to, uh, so that it had that like one foot in the grave feel to it. The paints that I use here are from the Nocturna Fantasy Pro line from Vallejo, but there's definitely other paints that you could substitute in for these specific colors. I initially based it out using cold flesh to establish our purple tones. And then I created a wash using frozen flesh and ran that over the entire uh, skin area. Unfortunately, I didn't get the wash mixture exactly down, so this didn't fall into the cracks as much as I had wanted. To bring back some of the color, I dry brushed it using cold flesh again. And to finish off with highlighting and another pass of dry brushing, I used pale flesh. All of these paints were from Vallejo, as I mentioned before. For the mummies, I ended up painting both the skin and the wrappings at the same time. For the skin, I based it using dark skin from Reaper, applied a wash of Agrax Earthshade from Citadel, and then did a little bit of dry brushing with the dark skin from Reaper again. For the wrappings, I had based it all out using bleached linens from Reaper, and then that same Agrax Earthshade uh, wash was applied to it. And for the majority of the wrappings, this is sufficient. For the areas that were very distinctively saying at high points, I did a little bit of dry brushing with bleach linens, but you probably could just leave it alone. For the whites, I wanted them to stand out distinctively from the skeletons I had painted earlier, so I decided to go with a glowing bone aesthetic. I had some difficulties finding a gray tone that I liked for the base color of this section. I would have preferred a slightly cooler gray than what I ended up with, but I ended up using rainy gray from Reaper, which is a neutral gray. I ended up washing this with BL10 green from uh, Citadel to give that bright green color. This was followed by a bit of dry brushing with rainy gray again to tone it down a touch. And then the finishing uh, highlighting was done with ghost white from Reaper, which is a cool off-white. For the black cloth and leather sections of these models, I unfortunately have ignored my own advice. And instead of basing out using a dark gray, and shading and highlighting to establish the various contrast tones. I instead based out using pure black by Reaper, which is a true black. This forced the next layer to be a dry brushing using Stormy Gray from Reaper, which is a neutral um, dark gray, so that I could establish some of the mid-tones in these areas. The final pass was highlighting and more dry brushing done with Dark Sea Gray by Vallejo, which is a lighter, uh, uh, cool gray color from the Stormy Gray. I chose to go with a cool gray here because I knew for the yellows and golds I'd be applying to other parts of the model, those were going to be a touch warm, so I wanted to balance out the look of the model. The brown leather sections of these models was probably the easiest section for me to paint. Uh, this is because it was predominantly achieved by using Hall Red from Vallejo mixed with a bit of glaze medium and running that over the zenithal highlighting that we had established in the priming layers. And that honestly looks pretty good the way it is and didn't require any additional highlighting or shading or dry brushing to achieve the look that we see on these models. For my team in colors, I decided to go with yellow and black. So you see the black in the armor, some of the leather work, and some of the cloth work, and you see the yellow in the gold accents on the armor, and here on the yellow cloth. 
For the yellow cloth, I wanted to have a little bit of a clean look to it, as opposed to, you know, the, the general undead crawling out of the earth, more of a well-maintained equipment uh, feel to it. So I based it out using Candlelight Yellow from Reaper. And then the wash was done using Lantern Yellow from Reaper. If you wanted to get more of a grimy or a darker shadowed look, you could use something like a sepia or an umber wash here. I then dry brushed it back up using candlelit yellow, and then finally highlighted using pale saffron from Reaper. For the armor on my team, I decided to go with a black metal to keep in with the team color look. So I based out using adamantium black from Reaper, which is a metallic black paint that is unfortunately extremely shiny. So I applied a layer of Nuln Oil as a wash on it to knock out a bit of that shine and to mat in some of the recesses and pits of the armor. This was then dry brushed using Shadowed Steel to brighten it up and uh, give it a little bit of a worn look. And then the final edge highlighting was done using Blade Steel from Reaper. For the lighter gray metal bits that appear on things like the ghoul's forearms, I actually just based it out using the same Blade Steel I previously used for edge highlighting and applied a little bit of Nuln Oil to uh, bring out some of the definition of the details. The other metallic color that was in the team colors is the gold that you see on various parts of the models, including things like the skulls on the belts and the points of the mummy's uh, armor. This gold color was achieved by first basing using dragon gold from Reaper, then applying a sepia wash from Vallejo, dry brushing back up using uh, dragon gold again from Reaper to brighten it up and then doing the highlighting using New Gold by Reaper. To further unifying the team aesthetic uh, between all the models, I ended up using the same basing style for all of them. This was done by first basing out using Astro Granite, which is a Citadel texture paste. It's a dark gray with a touch of blue, again cooling down the look of the model relative to the slightly warmer yellows that appear in the cloth and armor above. This was then washed with Agrax Earthshade from Citadel. And then finally dry brushed using Desert Sand from Reaper, though any type of slightly beige off-white would work here. After doing the basing to finish off this team, I decided to color in the rings to indicate their positions clearly. So for the mummies, we have green for them being blockers. For the whites, we have a red for, for them being blitzers. And then for the ghouls, we have yellow for them being catchers slash ball carriers. I would highly recommend if you're painting in the rings of your bases like this to run a layer of primer over the rings before you try putting down the color because that little bit of variation in color that you see from like the basing materials and priming is quite difficult to cover, especially with something like yellow paint. Overall, I'm actually quite happy with how this team turned out. I wasn't a big fan of some of the aesthetic choices they made with the modeling originally, but having spent some time with them, I'm definitely a bigger fan of them now than I was originally a month or two ago when I got them all. I'll probably in the long run end up replacing them with a third party uh, undead team, but for now, I think they're quite acceptable. I hope you found this video entertaining and informative. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. And if you know anyone that would be interested in this video, please share it with them because that helps the channel out a great deal. If you have any questions about this specific project or want to suggest other things that I could cover, please leave some comments down below. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.